and with the push of a single button, uh, I go live, which uh, would actually mark the first live stream that I've done on this channel. Um, I think probably most of the people who are currently waiting in the comments have come over from Luke's channel, so huge thank you to Luke, of course, for uh, donating all of these lovely people, encouraging people to come over. Um, yeah, you've given everyone the code word of fleeing incontinently to come over and, and pop that in the chat. Um, it's not much of a code when you knew that I was also in that chat, so um, yeah, I was sort of uh, expecting that to happen. Um, yeah, I'm going to give it a few minutes for uh, people to hopefully um, uh, turn up and arrive, because originally this was going to be going out at about half past nine, so in about half an hour. Um, and instead we're going live a little bit earlier, so just for those people who maybe haven't caught up quite yet. Um, yeah, here we are. Um, for those who, of you who are joining me for the first time, uh, I'm Andy, I am a photographer, uh, I work for CNET.com, which is a really, really great tech website, you should go and check out. Um, but I do uh, a lot of CNET photography and I do a lot of photography in my own time. I do landscapes, I do products, uh, I do cars, um, kind of anything that um, I like to point a camera at, to be honest. Um, so if you're at all into photography, if you want to uh, sharpen up your photo skills, if you want to uh, take new styles of photos, or if you just want to see pictures of Scotland or other landscapes or cars or anything like that, then you know, do please hit that subscribe button. Um, the reason I'm doing a live stream at all uh, at this point is that I just hit 2,000 subscribers, which is a hugely exciting milestone for me. I didn't think I would get anything like that number of people wanting to be involved almost at all, let alone um, within a year of, of, of launching. So uh, first of all, a huge, huge thank you to everyone who has been involved so far. Um, I love reading your comments, I love replying to your comments and talking to people uh, about their experiences with photography. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been really, really great. Um, obviously, uh, the last few months has been an extremely difficult time for everyone uh, the world over. Um, uh, I'm not going to try and argue that I've had a particularly difficult time, um, but it has obviously for obvious reasons with lockdown, it's meant that I haven't been going out and, and shooting a lot. So. Uh, it does look like we may have some light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I live in Scotland, and Scotland's uh, laws about lockdown are still pretty tight. I can travel locally, I think, within about five miles, although I, fingers crossed they're going to be relaxing that a little bit more. Um, but, uh, yeah, so hopefully some really, really cool shoots coming up pretty soon. Um, just going to keep an eye on the chat and see when uh, I think is a good time to basically get started. It's only three minutes past nine, so um, uh, I am on the gin. Um, it's good gin. Luke did uh, very kindly uh, sing the praises of my beard. Um, I will be honest, the beard is not is not by design. I mean, it's sort of by design. I extruded it from my face, but uh, this was just a lockdown experiment. Um, I don't normally have a beard or quite such wild hair, um, which I spent quite a long time trying to work out what the hell I can do with it. It makes it me look um, less like the weird hermit that I am. Uh, so here, here we are. Um, I'm trying to check out myself in my own monitor at the moment to see whether my hair is on point or whether it's an absolute disaster. And yes, I'm doing that largely to fill a certain amount of time. Uh, uh, but yes, um, what we're up to today, what I'm going to be doing as a bit of fun is I'm going to be blending in some Dungeons and Dragons tools into the world of photo editing via the Dungeons and Dragons dice or, um, I mean, they are D&D dice. Uh, we have a 10-sided dice and a regular 6-sided one. And my plan is that I'm going to be editing various photos, which I've hand-selected, uh, changing the values and seeing what sort of weird effects we can get just by editing based on the rolls of the dice. Now, let's, go and, uh, let's just go and take a look at the shots that we're going to be having a look at. Uh, hopefully, you can actually see the screen. Also my first time using OBS as live streaming software. So if this all goes to hell, 
which it almost certainly will. You'll just have to bear with me. Maybe when I've done a few more of these live ones, we can figure it out. Um, I had to jump through all kinds of hoops, even getting uh, my Canon camera to um, live stream. Because did you know that Canon cameras do not want to output their HDMI without things all over the screen? Because I didn't, but I do now, and I've managed to figure it out. Anyway, uh, those of you who are joining from Luke's stream and who will be familiar with Luke's work over on Outside Extra um, will be very familiar with this picture, or at least with the people and the characters in it. Uh, this is uh, the Oxventure Guild, the Oxventurers. Uh, Luke, Ellen, Mike, Andy, and Jane. Um, this is their Dungeons and Dragons uh, characters. This is the, uh, the the campaigns that they do, um, and I I shot this with those guys um, about some months ago. I don't think it was quite a year, but as I'm sure everyone has, I've completely lost all sense of time now. Um, could have been last week. Could have been last year. Uh, it was definitely last year. Um, yeah, really, really good shoot. Um, we had a lot of fun. This was for their... They did a charity Christmas single uh, called um, Everyone Else in the World. Literally Everyone Else in the World, um, I should say, uh, which they, they did for uh, to raise money for the charity Mind, and I think they raised a lot of money. I can't remember the exact figure. It was over 60000 anyway, um, which was just an incredible success. Um, so it was really, really great doing these photos with them. And I thought, this is one that you probably haven't seen from that set because it wasn't the one that we used for the actual album art. So I thought, we'll have a play around with this one. You get to see another one of those shots. And maybe there's another sneaky one of Luke hiding away in the end as well. But we're also going to have a look at a, a car, Lamborghini Huracan Performante that I shot in Wales. We're going to have a look at a seascape that I did in St. Monans at the coast in Scotland uh, right before lockdown kicked in. We're going to have a look at this uh, castle, 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 now I think it's Neuschwanstein. Um, I'm pretty sure that's A, what it's called, and B, how you pronounce it, but if I'm wrong, then I apologise to the Germans. Um, uh, these rocks from Bamford Edge in the Peak District, uh, this shot in Revenge in Croatia, and Dean Village in Edinburgh. Uh, all of which, as I say, is going to be based on the dice roll. So how is it going to work? Well, let's go back to this one, because we'll start with this one, and over in the Develop tab. And obviously in Lightroom, if you haven't seen Lightroom before, it's all your editing is done based on sliders. You move things up and down, then it changes the values. That's how you go about editing a photo. But I thought, rather than just doing it based on how I actually want these images to look, if we roll the dice and the numbers that these spit out is how we edit our photos. So we will roll first the six-sided dice, and if we get an even number, a two, four, or six, we move the slider up. If we get an odd number, a one, three, or five, we move the slider down. And then we roll the ten-sided dice to decide how much we actually change that slider. Excuse me. Um, so that's basically how we're going to do this. Um, it's going to be ridiculous. These photos are going to look awful, but it is completely a bit of fun. Funnily enough, this is not how I professionally edit my photos. Um, and I suspect it probably never will be, but um, we shall have to see how it goes. You know, if I get some amazing effect that um, I could never have got any other way, then hell, I'm going to patent this as a, as a tool. Um, that's it. It's mine now. Uh, no one else can do it. Uh, I'm going to take a moment just to jump into the uh, uh, jump into the comments and have a little look through because um, I can see there's quite a few people already in here. We've got over 100 people watching, which is precisely over 100 more than I thought I would have um, on this stream at this point. Um, good luck with OBS, says Shy Violet. Yeah, good luck indeed. Um, uh, I watch uh, Luke's and, well, all of Outside Extra and, and Xbox's uh, live streams, and even with such experienced, talented broadcasters as they are, OBS still often is the thing that can trip them up um, uh, and and gives them, gives them some problems. Um, I'm, I'm really hoping that my audio is fine, my video is fine. Um, I wasn't really able to fully test this as much as I hope. Um, uh, but yeah, um, yeah, we've got, we've got some, we've got plenty, lots of people in here. 
Oh, Me Mephi Tugo says, and now the earworm is back, um, relating to their single. Yeah, it was, it was a great earworm. It was really catchy. It's a really, really nice tune. It's still on Spotify and on all the other streaming services. Uh, I think the artist is the Ox Venturers Guild, and the song is called Literally Everyone Else in the World. Um, yeah, do have a listen. I'd play it now, but I didn't ask them for the rights, and um, I don't know how to play it on this stream, so I'm um, just go and find it. Hmm. Uh, Luke says, you better not mess up Dob's face. Uh, Dob being Luke's character, of course. Um, I'm sorry, Luke, but odds are I am going to seriously mess up Dob's face. That is absolutely going to... Um, uh, that's absolutely going to be the thing that happens. Um, Andy McPee, uh, a regular on uh, the um, outside Xbox streams, says it's going to be pretty awkward when random chance proves to be a better photo editor than me. I'll be honest, mate, that is exactly what I'm afraid of right now, is that I'm going to come up with things that I just could not uh, have thought of on my own, on my own Steam. Uh, oh, your audio is perfect, so that is excellent. Uh, John Sharplin says, uh, we already vibe in, Andy. These shots already look excellent. Well, that is really, really kind of you. Thank you very much. Um, so cool. Um, I'm going to, I think, oh, oh Vivian uh, asks, are the images already color graded or corrected? Um, no, they're not. No, this is all straight out of camera, um, uh, which, I mean, let's let's talk about photography because I'm a photography channel, so why on earth not? But um, I like to get my images as close as possible to uh, a, a really good point um, in camera, whether that uh, is through lighting, as in this case. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll spoil the surprise and I'll show you the shot of Luke, but... So, this is how this, was, this, this shot was lit, and I, I will hasten to add that this is actually um, thro uh, their producer, um, uh, whose name escapes me, whose name... Who, it's not producer John, who's a very close friend of mine and who is a wonderful, wonderful man. Not that the other one isn't. It's producer... Anyway. Um, uh, yeah, uh, they, they made this amazing light rig. And it, and it, as you can see, it's all these, uh, these bulbs and it's suspended over the top in this rig and it casts this really, really beautiful light down. Uh, was, not my, uh, was not my doing. Um, so I... Like, they have full credit for the the lighting effects um, on this one. They they're really really good guys, and all the direction and video, all that work that they did, they made it look beautiful. So, you know, really, James, thank you, producer James. Of course, it's producer James. Yeah, and he's great, very very talented. And I think his uh, his friend who was helping out the day was maybe called Alex, um, and and he built this thing. Yeah, so it was great. Um, but it meant that this shot is uh, is completely out of camera. Um, untouched uh, at all if we just turn on the uh, the metadata so I shot this at f2.8 um, on a 2470 lens um, ISO 1000 because it was quite dark this was at night time um, uh, in a garden uh, just with natural light so I did have to boost that ISO quite a bit uh, and that does mean that you tend to get a little bit of image noise. If we zoom in on the fine details, we can see there is a bit of noise and, you know, it's it's a bit soft. It's not quite as, as pin sharp as, as I'd have liked it. Uh, and, um, uh, yeah, what one two hundredth of a second. And, uh, yeah, it's I, I'm really, really pleased with how these shots came out. And with a little bit of work, um, I think we got some really, really good results in this. And also, the shoot itself was hella fun. These guys are... Uh, Really, really nice. Uh, I, I said I, well, I didn't say, but I, I didn't anticipate saying anything kind of about them. But you guys know you follow their stuff. Like they are just as lovely and sweet and great fun in real life as they always seem on their streams. It's not an act just to rope you in and uh, watch their things. Mine is. I'm nothing like this, of course. Um, yeah, um, I'm going to have a quick look back in the comments before we before we get going. Uh, what uh, DSLR were these taken on, says John Sharplin. Uh, these were all on a uh, Canon 5D Mark IV, which is, for the most part, my go-to uh, camera. Uh, uh, Danny McNamara says, Oxbox, send their regards. Um, well, I hope so. Um, I do hope so. Uh, yeah, um, straight off camera and looking that amazing, says Gentleman Drill. Well, thank you very much. Um, hopefully, with a bit of a dice roll, we can get them looking even better. But I strongly suspect that what we're going to do is ruin some nice pictures. Um, yeah, um, 
MX Tay says, feeling like Dob is judging my soul. He is, and but he's a fair judge, um, I, I think. I think from any of you who's uh, seen the uh, their D and D campaigns will will know that he is uh, fair and and good with good with money. Unless he's near a lake. Um, Please zoom in on Mike's face too to make Luke feel better, says Beth Bloomer. There's Mike's face. There's Ellen's face. So this is the problem. Going back to the photography. Uh, at f2.8, that's uh, a quite shallow depth of field to let in a lot of light, which does mean that I think my focus was on Luke, um, but Ellen is closer to the camera, so she's kind of out of focus in an ideal world. I'd be taking a shot like this at something a bit more like f8, maybe f10, um, something around there to get that better depth of field, make sure everyone's in focus. But using those sorts of apertures means that you're letting in much less light, so you need to throw more light at it. But all we had was this overhead rig, so this is what we got. Very, very pleased um, with the shots regardless, it's fine. And he's looking up all dreamy-like in that way that he does. Um, I got a portrait of Andy, which uh, maybe I should have loaded some of these up to talk through, but um, he looked super epic and manly with his hat. He's sort of looking up into the light. Uh, cheekbones absolutely popping. I think, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the guy's done to get cheekbones like that, but um, a deal with a devil evidently went through. And then we've got we've got Jane or Prudence as her character is over here, and and I and I kind of love it because she almost looks a bit. Um, Sort of disconnected from the rest of the group in a in a really really perfect way that sometimes prudence is she's sort of off doing her own evil thing and making her own evil plots and uh, i kind of like to feel that that's um slightly represented here um yeah um cool i think we've got um the alert at the bottom right is distracting me oh down here this one I don't know what that is. One new notification. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, I really, I could have tried to crop out some of these things, uh, my window bars and everything else. I've tried as much as possible to figure out how to do this. But as I say, this is uh, my first stream, uh, my first time using OBS and uh, the other um, live streaming hardware, and it's been uh, it's been tricky. Um, I had to install. Uh, a piece of software called Magic Lantern on my Canon DSLR, uh, which basically overrides the, uh, the the factory installed firmware. It lets you change up certain settings, which allows you to live stream from it. Because I googled all over the internet for how to live stream with Canon DSLRs, it's not easy. Um, I've done a lot of I've done a lot of talking. It's about twenty past nine now, um, so I think uh, I think that's good. I'm I'm having a little check through the uh through the comments again. John Sharplin says, Who gave Andy those cheekbones? Um and Beth Bloomer says, Honestly, I would kill for Andy's cheekbones and yeah, I mean I think we all would. Um I certainly would. I'm assuming you do mean that Andy, not this one, because I do not have his cheekbones. Uh, which is disappointing. It's one of life's many disappointments, unfortunately. Um nor do I have all the rest of their talent at everything else that they that they do. Um, they're they're a good bunch. Um, I'm assuming almost everyone here is also a um, uh, is a is a fan of their stuff. So thank you very much for joining, and thank you obviously to these guys for having me uh, along on the day. It was a really really good fun shoot. And as I say, if you haven't uh, listened to their song, then you should go and do it. But it's it's twenty past nine, and I think it's time that we begin. So just in case there's anyone who's arrived since I explained the rules, um, we're editing photos using D&D &D dice. We'll start with a roll from a six-sided dice, and if it is a even number, two, four, or six, we're going to move the slider up. If it's an odd number, one, three, or five, we're going to move the slider down. And how much we're going to move the slider is going to be determined by this ten-sided D&D die. Um, so yeah, I think I think let's begin. I haven't even done a test run of this. I don't think it's going to work very well at all, but it's going to be fun. So let's let's kick off. Um, okay, things like temp and tint. I'm going to come. I'm going to come back to um, exposure. I'm not going to touch purely because if I went and rolled a minus ten on exposure, then we're just going to have 
a black picture and the rest of this stream isn't going to work at all. So I'm going to come back maybe to exposure. Let's just reset that. So I'm going to start with highlight shadow whites and blacks first. Okay. So we're going for high, we're rolling for highlights now. We don't have crits or anything like that because I couldn't figure out logistically what a, what a critical role would be. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe a preset. Maybe we could randomly apply a, a preset or something. Who knows? Right. We're going to start rolling the six first, and that's a two. So we're going to move the slider up. So our highlights are going up. And how much they're going to go up? Two. So 20. We're going up. 20 on the highlight slider we're starting out we're starting out pretty subtle that's not that's not doing a lot off and on just got a little bit of a boost so far we're not yet ruined uh we're not yet ruined the shop uh shadows okay here we go let's move over to our shadows most of this image is probably made up of the shadows because it is quite a dark image so this this is where it could all go horribly wrong okay six sided die and it's a six so again we're going up we're going to be boosting our shadows it's probably safer than reducing them four so shadows go up 40. okay i mean so far so far so good you know this isn't this isn't looking too bad i'm running dangerously low on gin so um uh, oh and yes, it does say it does say twenty one um, uh, shy violet. It's not. I'm not doing exact figures because sometimes I can't quite get it exact. And if I start pressing numbers on my keyboard, it's going to start switching scenes in OBS. You know, one, and then uh, it's oh, it's also it's set the rating, and and I need to go back to two, I think, in order to yes, that's right, picture in picture mode. Uh, I was going to write myself a little series of cheat sheets and just put it under my monitor that says scene one is me, scene two is picture in picture. And I've gone back to picture in picture, so we're okay. Anyway, where was I? Whites. I can hear my cat sneezing at the door. Hi, Toulouse. Uh, five. Okay, so the whites, we're going to be taking those down a few steps. And how much? By 40. Minus 40 on the whites. Here we go. I mean, we've basically taken it back to square one, haven't we? This isn't really doing a whole lot. This is actually just quite a nice edit. I was expecting something um, much more uh, uh, much more dramatic so far. Okay, let's see what the blacks do then. So we're going one. We're going down in the black level. We're going down by 80. Minus what? Minus 80. 80. Oh dear. Okay, here we go. Or oh, as near as I can get it to 80. 81. Okay, now we've got some dramatic effects. Oh, okay. Everyone is now wanting to see to lose. All right, we can we can make this happen. Come on, Sneezy. Ah, well, he's a lovely boy, but he has been sneezing at the door because he has a condition which makes him sneeze a lot. But isn't he just the most adorable cat you've ever seen in your whole life? Ah, I can just put it on full screen and then we can just watch Toulouse for a little while. Um, anyway, let's pop him down because... Uh, He's got cat business to attend to, and I've got photos to weirdly edit. So let's uh, keep on going with this uh, weird project that I've come up with for some reason. Lots of lots of good responses to uh, to Toulouse. Uh, yes, he is adorable. He is absolutely uh, such a good floofy little beast. So where were we? Okay, we're moving on to presence, and we're going to start with uh, with texture. And we've rolled a four, so we're going to move the texture slider up. And we're going to move it up 80. We're going to add in a whole load of texture. Things are going to get crunchy. Okay, so here we are. Yeah, we're, we're starting to get, uh, in a weird way now, clarity. Now, clarity is, as anyone, everyone knows, that's where all their magic happens. All pro photographers just go clarity plus 100 and call it a day. 
two. So we are going up on the clarity. That's good. And we're going up 90. We're going plus 90 on clarity. Oh, there we go. Yes, now things are getting interesting. Um, yeah, it's taken. It's certainly taken a turn. Um, we've gone very, very crunchy. We've got a lot of contrast going on. It's a very, very interesting scene. Um, if we just have a flick before, this was our original shot, which is now looking very uh, soft focus in comparison. So that's what's happening here. Right, vibrance. Let's move on to vibrance. Hello. <laughs> Meow. I know. Uh, six, so we're going up, and we are going up five, plus 50 on Vibrance. Um, okay, that's not, that's not too terrible. And on Saturation, also up, roll the six, up 50 as well, so both Vibrance and Saturation is going up, plus 50. Ho oh, ho dear! Okay, yeah, things have gone very weird. Um, they have then been... Um, thank you so much for your assistance, Toulouse. Come on, look, we've got things to do. If you, will, if I just cuddle you like this for a while, will you sit? Will you sit? Will you behave? Because I'm going to carry on editing, so you can just do your cat thing here. Um, okay, let's move on. Shall we do the tone curve? Let's do the tone curve. Let's start with highlights in the tone curve, and we're going to go down, because it's a 5, uh, and we're going down 80. Uh, so there we go. Okay. Shy Violet says, wow, they've gone crazy with the spray tan. They certainly, certainly have. Um, come on, it's fine. Uh, right, lights. He's peering his little head off here. Uh, three. So what did I say? Three is going is going down. Okay. So we're going to lose a lot of vibrance, but we're only going down by ten. We've rolled a one, so we can take it to roughly, roughly there. I mean, it's not. It, it's it's still at least visible. My fear was that whatever I would do would just um, uh, would just make everything so impossible to see that it would make every other edit redundant. So actually, we're doing okay, aren't we? Yes. Okay. I really think that you are the star of this this live stream um, now. If I thought that you would just sit comfortably on the desk, I would I would let you wander around, but I know that's not going to be the case. Let's move on to our darks, and we're going up. We're going up 40 in our darks, so to that point. And then the shadows, just to finish off the tone curve, down by 60. So yeah, now everything is getting very, very dark and crunchy again. Um, all right, but I'm trusting you, trusting you to sit carefully and not get too in the way. But we shall have to see about that, won't we? This is what I get for letting him in. Give him an inch and this is what happens. Oh, we want to play with the dice. This is going to make things even more interesting. Didn't expect this. This is the critical role that we're afraid of. It brings in, it brings in Toulouse. Um, okay, where did we get to? HSL. Now we could go through these um, individually. That might take us quite a while. And I've lined up a few pictures, so I didn't intend to spend that long on any one photo. But Let's let's give it a let's give it a quick go in the hue tab at least first, and we'll start with red. I'm going to go through these pretty quickly. Are you ready to lose? We're ready. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Six. So we're going up by nine in the red hue slider. Up by ninety. Okay. That's that's gone very weird. It's almost become a bit sort of like a pop art print now, which I actually don't hate. So let's see where we get to with the rest of this. Orange. Then we're going down by 80. <laughs> Things are getting odd. Um, have Toulouse roll the dice. Yeah. How long until Toulouse knocks over the gym, says Beth Bloomer. Uh, not long uh, at all, so I better finish it off just in case. 
There you go. Um, okay, yellows, hue. Uh, we're going down by uh, zero, oh, which is 10. So yellows are going right the way to the bottom. Uh, greens down by 80. Uh, up by 550 for the aquas. I don't think there's a lot of aqua. Oh, there is a bit actually. This is Ellen's hair. So there we go. Uh, three. So down by 90 on the blues. Oh, yeah. That's very much Ellen's hair. Ellen's hair is standing out more than anything right now. It's just this glowing orb of blue. Um, okay. Purples. I don't really think there's much purple, but who knows now. Oh, roll this one first, down by 40, and if I move this up and down, no, there's a tiny little bit in the brim of Andy's hat, but now it's not really doing a lot, so let's just leave it there. Uh, wrong dice. Magenta, we're going uh, up by 10, and again, I don't think there's really any magenta in this, in this image. So, that's where we've come to so far, off and on. It's, um, if I'm honest, not dissimilar to a piece of art I once submitted for uh, my GCSE, which it was basically when I discovered Photoshop 5, I think it might have been at the time, a, a horrible amount of time ago if I really think about it. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's very, very weird, um, but yeah, we shall, we shall pursue. Um, I'm not going to you know what, well, let's go into saturation. No, let's go to luminance first, because I think that might have a better effect on things. So we're going to start off going on the reds, we're going down by 70. Things are getting dark here. Uh, oranges up, up 70. Okay, yep, yeah, we're just boosting that contrast. You know, we may end up with quite a cool looking photo here. Uh, down by 40 on the yellows. And you know, the rest of them, I don't think we're really going to get anything out, so I might just ignore those. Let's go into saturation. Let's see what we can get from there. Wait, where did Toulouse go? Uh, he's right. He's right here. Being an excellent little champion. Um, okay, uh, saturation, and let's start off with the reds. Most of the colours for this scene really are in kind of the reds and the oranges and uh, the yellows are a bit. So let's just start with the first three, and we're going down by 60 on the reds. Uh, around there, that'll do. Oranges, we're going down by 70. And then... Uh, yellows, we are going up by 20. Okay. <laughs> it's not what I intended with it, but I don't, I don't hate it. Um, I, I suppose I've certainly, oh, okay, yeah, I hate it. I do. I hate it. You know, that's how it was and that's how, that's how it is now. So, um, uh, Luke uh, in the chat says, yes, I'm into it. Really? Really? If I'd have submitted this for your album art, do you think you'd have gone with it? Answer honestly. Um, let's add in a little bit of split toning. Let's see what happens here. So the saturation is only going to be able to go up. So let's see how much we're going to go up. 60 on whatever color we're going to add. And we're going to choose that again. Dice roll of two actually you know what because it goes up to 360 so you know what it says tw up to 360 so any ideas of how to do this let's just put it uh six three and the first one was a two wasn't it so two three six <gasps> Which is exactly where I clicked. That was magical. 
Okay, so there's some of our highlights and the shadow saturation. We're going with uh, uh, 70. And for the uh, the hue, one, nine, one ninety, which is around there. Or maybe we could have just gone with nineteen. What does nineteen? If I hadn't have rolled a third time, why don't we do that? Why don't we keep it at nineteen? Because we've got sort of bluey tones in those highlights, and now we've got these orangey tones in the shadows. Um, so, uh, so yeah, uh, Luke says, we look so grunge, I love it. This should have been the cover, huge regrets. Well, um, sorry. It is, it is very, very grungy, no question. So, but I don't think there's lots more really that we could do at this point. We could get a little bit more freaky down here in the red, green, and blue primary channels. And again, we're going to have an issue of how do I really go about... Oh no, it should be the same. Okay. All right, we'll start with red primary. And we're going to go uh, up by 80. Okay. And the saturation down by 20. Ooh. Things are looking odd. Again, even more odd. Uh... Kyle be back says to, to Luke maybe you can do a punk remix you know what I can see it probably working more for that um, up by 30 on the green primary and then if a saturation up by 50 ish give or take okay blue primary uh, down by 30 And then down by 30 in the saturation. So that's basically our finished image. Um, yeah. If, if we hadn't have got sort of the weird face effects that I think is because of this. Uh, yeah, it's, it's this. It's, it's kind of changed that. So let's just turn that off for a moment. I don't hate it. It's very much got like a 90s grunge garage band sort of thing I, you know I can imagine being in a, a music shop and picking up an old CD of uh, of some mongy grunge band where this is their album art for it which is not to say that it's a good photo it's to say that it might have its use in some corners of of an old shop uh <laughs> Luke says, go back to before the weird skin patches, export that JPEG, I need it for wallpaper. Oh, you know what? Okay. Well, we can go export, export. Um, we're not going to put in subfolders. We're not going to rename it, and we're not going to resize it. We're just going to go export, and you can have that one, Luke. Um, it's pretty terrible, but um, at least Ellen's hair really pops out. Um, of this uh, of the picture that is the before lovely everyone looks so nice you'd put that on a nice frame above your fireplace in your parents home and then this is more the bedroom of the tea moody teenager upstairs so okay i think that's probably it for that photo so um what time are we on 20 to 10 we've been going for 40 minutes okay um we're going to move on and uh, to to this uh, which is a Lamborghini Huracan Performante Spider, it's a drop top, uh, which I shot in Wales, I think last year, with the guys from Carfection, which is a uh, amazing, amazing uh, YouTube channel and websites part of part of CNET and CBS. Um, they they do these really really great videos all about uh, really cool cars, exotic cars, performance cars, sports cars, that kind of thing. So we shot this in uh, in Wales on a weirdly nice day for Wales with a beautiful sunset with this as you can see sort of to the back right behind the car you can see the sun going down um going down in this shot so let's take what could be a really nice shot absolutely no respect for the stream this one has he 
Um, I'm looking forward to watching that back. Oh, and now he's just going out and making my door creak. That's absolutely fine. Um, yeah, <laughs> he's distracted me completely now. Um, <laughs> uh, where was I? In Wales, apparently. Yeah, uh, this was a really, really great shoot. It took a lot of doing, um, but yeah, we, we got some really cool stuff in the end. So let's kill it with dice. Um, which we should put on a um, we should put on a t-shirt. Kill it with dice four. So we're going up, and we're going up ninety on highlights. So blowing out that sky completely. Normally we'd bring it down and look. We capture all these tones over here, but nope. We're not having tones. We're not allowed them. The dice has spoken. We're going up plus ninety shadows. Down by twenty. Okay, we're going high contrast with this one apparently. Whites up, 20. And then with the black levels, we're going down by 50. So this is going to look awful almost uh, straight away. Yeah, it is. It's looking, it's looking pretty poor. So already we've kind of ruined, um, ruined a nice photo. So let's crack on into the presents, into the present. Uh, up, 50. I hope at least we get to go up in uh, the clarity because I think that'll help bring back some of that lost uh, detail. What did I say, 50, okay. Something around there. And then um, uh, up, I was right, thankfully, up uh, 90 in the clarity. Ooh, yes, there we go. Um, it's looking, I would say, a little bit like one of those bad presets that you would find on a, on a weird iPhone editing app that's lurking really, really in the bowels of the App Store where, where nothing good lurks and you apply this with probably a name like uh, Drama or Pop or something. Um, yeah, so there we go. Um, that's that's my magazine shot ready to ready to go. Um, Beth Bloomer says, "Ooh, that's not terrible." Um, I think it is kind of terrible. It's very sweet of you to, to suggest though. Although Luke does say, after the dice is spoken, you should show us how it looks if you do it properly. That's actually not a bad idea. Let's get through this one, and then I will do a very quick edit like very quick edit of what I would actually do to kind of bring it out properly. So let's keep on going. D Hayes uh, down by 50. Uh, okay, so things are going sort of weird and airy and light. Vibrance uh, down 80. And saturation also down by 10. Or 12 because I couldn't quite get it um, exactly as I wanted. Uh, let's ignore the tone curve this time. No, no, that's definitely not like, ignore the tone curve. Stop ignoring the tone curve, Andy. Uh, highlights down by 20. So I should at least recover a little bit of what we blew out before. It hasn't. Hasn't done anything. And then uh, lights down by 20. I suppose we are recovering ever so slightly. Let's just flick that panel off. I mean, it's not really, it's not rescuing this photo, is it? Okay, um, darks are going uh, up by 30, as though we need to recover even more shadow detail. We do not. Um, but luckily, our shadows are going down by 70, all the way back down here. So, okay, we're getting, uh, we're getting weird again. Uh, uh, Vivian says, I think this is an actual filter for Metro 2033. You know what, you're probably not wrong. Um, yeah, we're, we've lost all our colour. Um, we've lost all of the drama, all of the nice mood of what was a beautiful sunset. So that's uh, that's nice, thank you very much. You know, we can start playing around with the hue and saturation in HSL, but in all honesty, because we've stripped out so much of this colour, I don't think it's going to make any difference. It's going to be a waste of time. You know, that's... Uh, I'd, Doing a little bit. Let's okay. Let's just do orange down by ten, 
Um, yellow will have some from the actual Lambo down by 70. But even then, it's not really doing anything. The most slight, subtle shift. So, uh, But luminance might do a little bit more. So on the uh, on the orange, we're going down by 10. 13, apparently. Um, Dysos, so mean, says secretary. Uh, secretagent secretagent Sam I'm really sorry I've butchered your username um, but yes you're right they are mean and they're not giving me an easy ride apparently um, what's happening up by 10 on the yellows so all the way to the top on the luminance which is a shame because I was hoping to bring it down a little bit getting more under control but no we're apparently blowing it out even more um, with the rest of it yeah I don't think there's going to be much else going on because everything else is blown out. So that's that's our that's our lot. Um, the split toning will will do though because that should actually make a big difference. So in the saturation for our highlights, we are going. Um, uh, what am I doing? We're going up to uh, ten. So all the way, and we're going to be doing thirty. 38 because we can't go 380 so uh, 38 on the highlights brings us to about there and then um, <laughs> this is where this is where color comes to die says Beth Bloomer you are absolutely right this is um, and then in our shadows then we're going up to 30 saturation in the shadows and we're going to take it to 85 which is within the same color uh, area that we we're on before so we have basically now got this sort of weird orangey greeny color going on which um, yeah I don't think is very good so I'm gonna call this edit pretty much done because everything else that's going on uh, down here in these isn't really gonna do loads because we stripped out so much color to begin with. So as as Luke suggested, um, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go reset and I'm gonna do this very, very quickly. I don't I, I don't remember what I did to this picture uh, immediately. So I'm gonna try and make this a bit of a speed edit. Let's go, okay, reset. So, okay, bring down those highlights a little bit in the sky because I wanna control those just a touch, but we don't wanna kill all of that um, ambience. If you bring it right down, you lose kind of some of that drama from the from the actual light. So let's put it at about there. The shadows I will lift a little bit because that's where some of the car comes from. Uh, the whites I would probably boost up to add a little bit more contrast back in. Um, ah, a drink delivery is arriving. It's, thanks very much. It's very, it's nice. I've got assistance, booze assistance, of course. Um, thank you very much. Oh, this is good gin. Um, the blacks, I probably wouldn't do much with those. I might actually up the clarity a little bit. Dehaze, I don't think I would touch. Um, but one of the things that I often do uh, with um, with most of my uh, editing generally is I do a lot of my edits using adjustment brushes, which I wasn't going to bother with dice because you can't do adjustment brushes with dice. So let's bring down the exposure a little bit on that sky just to help control it a bit more. I'll also up the contrast, also up the clarity, because if you really pump up the clarity on sky, it really carves out those cloud details, separates it from the dark blue of the sky with those with the actual fluffy white. So suddenly you get loads of, uh, of really cool detail. If we just flick that off and on, you can see how much of a difference that's made uh, to the sky. We have got some uh, vignetting going on here. Maybe I could just turn on my enable profile corrections and yeah it's it's cleared that up but I did like a little bit so let's bring it back down to about there so um, I'm going to darken up down here a little bit just bring that in there and again these are these are quick edits um, I think I probably took a few hours over this shot uh, to begin with we'll straighten it up um, a little bit more like that and what's our we'll warm it up slightly and also up that tint maybe the contrast is a touch and then 
then probably put a little bit of little bit of blue in those shadows just to cool them up, cool them down, and a little bit of warmth in those highlights. Let's move that over there. Something a little bit more like that as what uh, five minutes, um, uh, a five minute edit. You know, it's popping out a little bit more. Um, I don't really like it. I've gone too far with that tint. Um, something more like that. Bring down some of that vibrance a little bit, but then bring up some of the saturation to make those colors pop. Yeah, you know, it's okay. I don't remember what I did to this shot to begin with. You can bring those blues down to make the sky pop a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, it's fine. I think I prefer what I've done in my actual edits to the awful thing we had uh, with the uh, dice go uh, with the dice roll. Let's um, have a quick check in with the uh, with the comments. Uh, hello, mysterious assistant says Emily Price. Uh, yes, I it is handy um, having a having a, a gin assistant. Although I, I now do have two gin glasses, so I can get rid of one lest it look like I have uh, been enjoying the gin too much. Mm. Uh, Eva says we should get Luke a goblet assistant. Yes, I think Luke would probably very much like uh, a goblet assistant. Um, John Sharpton says, did Toulouse bring you that? What a wonderful housemate. Oh, if only he could bring me booze. That is, to be fair, the one downside to him being a cat is that he cannot carry the booze no matter how many hours I spend trying to train him. Um, okay, we're going to move on to another shot. Now this is a, uh, it's a pier wall um, in uh, St. Monans, M-O-N-A-N-S. That's on the uh, sort of the northeast uh, coast of Scotland, um, probably about an hour and a half drive north of Edinburgh. Um, and I loved it because we've got this amazing zigzaggy line. I remember when I first saw a photo of this, I didn't think it was real. I thought it was like a weird, uh, weird Photoshop of some kind. But it's amazing. And on this day in particular, the, the, there was a storm blowing in, so the waves are really, really crashing against it. And it just shows how well it's been designed in the zigzags that really kind of cuts the water up and stops... Um, stops the waves going into the harbour because on the left side of the frame we've got these crashing waves going up and some of the other shots that were the water was splashing over the wall on the right side it's still and calm and lovely so i think it's really nice this kind of duality in this image um i took this with a a slower shutter speed um uh, yeah almost half a second in order to give a little bit of motion blur to the water. I did a whole video on this. If you are interested in this shot, take a look on, on my channel. I think it's called, um, I think that it's just called like Epic Seascapes or something like that. Should be pretty easy to, um, should be pretty easy to find. Because um, on my finished one, I blended together various different waves that I'd taken from uh, multiple images and then combined them into uh, a finished shot which had more drama in it because I really like that we've got this rock here sort of on the middle left of the frame which is sort of exposed and we've got the waves up here but then I also photoshopped in some of the other splashes and brought all those different dynamic elements together to create a shot which looked so much more epic and moody um, but all taken at the time on location you know not just photoshopping in a wave from a beach in Hawaii or something. Uh, some massive surfer going over um, the wall would look a little bit daft. Um, yeah, but it's a, it was a shot that I, I thought was really cool. Um, it certainly got a lot of drama, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how we can completely annihilate all of the mood in this image. So let's start with our highlights then, and we're going down by 30. Uh, okay. So far, not too much of a problem. The shadows are going up by 80. Okay, so already we've got that sort of HDR over-processed look. If, all we, if we just go in and add a ton of clarity now, boom, there's a Photomatics uh, shot, for those of you that remember Photomatics. Um, the whites are going down by... 90 so we're taking out most of the whites this really is 
going super hdr -y. Okay. Uh, and the blacks up by 40. So we're stripping all contrast and color, uh, not color, contrast and mood from this scene. So that's fine. Presence then. Texture is going up by 80. I think we are going to get that crunchy HDR look. Oh dear me. Um, and uh, clarity also up by by 90. We are going up by 90 on the clarity. Oh dear me. Yeah, okay. We are in a uh, we are in a weird place now with this one, aren't we? Um, yeah, again, very reminiscent of some of the shots I used to do um, back in the day when I first found out what um, what it meant to do an HDR process of um, of a single raw file, which is basically what we're doing. Um, let's see what the uh, dehaze, because that wants us to go uh, down by 60. Uh, which is um, ruining ruining the shot, I think, a little bit. Not that it was um, uh, not that it was good before, but that's kind of taken uh, spoiled it a little bit. We might come back to dehaze, and I might just make the executive decision to undo that, or maybe re-roll. You know what? Let's re-roll. Eighty, even worse. Let's leave it as it is. Um, okay, vibrance. Uh, vibrance. We're going down by fifty. And saturation, we're going down by 40. Okay, so basically we are going for a weird, ghostly, moody uh, black and white um, with almost all color stripped out. There's a before, here's what we've come to. Thank you, Dice, for destroying my images. Um, tone curve then, let's see what we're gonna pull back from our tone curve. Um, 21 Angry Bubble says, I'm watching on a small screen, so the additional clarity doesn't look too bad. Maybe that's the maybe that's the thing to do then. Find the smallest screen in your house and load this live stream and then decide um, how it's doing. For those of you who may be watching on a big TV, then God help you. God help you. Okay, we're going uh, we're going down by eighty on the highlights. I'm sorry, up. That's a four. We're going up eighty um, on the highlights. I forgot my rules for a moment. It's a four. Four means up. Lights. Uh, we're also going up by 50. <laughs> okay. Uh, up by 80 in the darks. I'm sorry, down by 80 in the darks. I can at some point remember which way around. Okay, it's going a little bit sepia. And down three, it was a five before, by uh, ten in our shadows, minus one hundred. I, I mean, I think it's pulled. It's it's pulled back some of the contrast and drama that we lost from before. If we turn the tone curve off, very very flat and grey and lifeless and um, you know, very very sort of just washed out. Uh, and now at least horrible though it is. It's brought back some detail. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, I think Luke is explaining HDR. Uh, as far as I know, your phone basically takes several photos of different exposures and blends them, which is why you sometimes get a tiny blur on HDR photo that it balances out light slash dark. Um, I assume you are explaining HDR. But Luke, you're basically spot on. Uh, multiple photos, you take one that's uh, that's light and uh, going through to one that's dark, you blend them together, it means you get uh, protected highlights and protected shadows, a nice even exposure overall. Okay, again I think we've got the issue that if we, we've stripped out so much colour early on that there's very little that we can change in the hues, saturation, even in the blues, which is where all our colour was, Nothing's really happening there, so I don't think there's any point in taking this further. Oh no, split toning. That's still a thing we can do. Um, so the saturation, we're going to go up by 30 
in the highlights. So we're going to go split tone. And the hue, we're going 1, 8, 6, which takes us roughly there. So we've at least got a bit of a blue back. Blue like the ocean. Uh, hang on, wrong one, this one. 80 in the shadow saturation. And 37. Which brings us to about here. Which looks overall disgusting. So that's nice. Uh, I haven't even straightened my horizon out. So that's, you know, we can do that. That must have been annoying everyone. Certainly annoying me now. Um, and my corrections to straighten it out. Bring that vignette back a little bit because those corners are a bit too bright. Actually, has that straightened it? It's warped it that way. I've now got a bendy horizon. So let's just undo that. You know what? That doesn't matter. It's irrelevant right now. Um, yeah, that's a disgusting, disgusting photo. Um, but good fun. And I will be honest, so far, I am very, very glad that the, that the dice are not editing these photos better than I am. Had I have uh, been completely beaten by the dice, I think I would have been quite upset. Um, so let's move on. And we're going to move on to Kassel, Kassel, Castle Neuschwanstein. And I, I think it is Neuschwanstein. Mm. Quick, quick check in the... Um, uh, in the comments, uh, Rebecca M says, "Yeah, it is looking super vintage now. Um, yes, it is looking super vintage in a really terrible, 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 terrible way." Um, oh, and uh, and Katie says, "Shows how to do it properly now." Okay, if we insist, um, let's go ahead and click reset. No, well, let's create a copy just so I can go back at the end and see what a terrible, uh, terrible mess app made, and then. Oh dear, oh, stop zooming. Uh, develop settings, reset, okay. You know what, with this shot, I actually don't think I did loads to it because it was already so moody, so subtle. I brought up that exposure because it was a bit dark. Um, I maybe lifted those shadows a little bit, brought down those highlights a touch. And again, just adding a little bit of pop, maybe a little bit of contrast. Flick before. Oh, of course, my before isn't really the before. It's the terrible mess we made, so that isn't telling me anything. Um, but that's okay. This is a shot that um, really uh, will benefit from having some clarity, but not like we did before, not adding it to absolutely everything because then everything goes really crunchy and weird. So this is an example of when I would use adjustment brushes. I'll reset everything to, to zero. We'll add in, say, 30 clarity slightly bigger brush size and we're just going to paint in our clarity onto the water onto those waves and as we do it's just going to make them pop out a little bit more give them a little bit more texture but crucially it's not just making everything including all the texture on this uh, on the concrete all in the clouds it's not adding unwanted texture it's basically adding a little bit of boost just to where we want it uh, we can turn on to see where we've just painted in uh, that effect. Everywhere that's pink is where I've painted. Um, and let's turn that off. And we could push that clarity even further, bring out a lot more mood. So maybe I do a little bit of that, raise those shadows a touch, maybe even push the whites a bit more. Maybe bring the highlights down a touch over here. That's starting to look a little bit more like it. Um, Color wise, I definitely want to bring down the vibrance a little bit. Um, I wanted to have a bit more of a desaturated look that kind of suits that drama and mood that we were going for. Um, and I might even bring in another adjustment brush. Again, we'll reset that, up the exposure by a touch, bring down the flow so it doesn't apply as much of the effect at once. It sort of builds it up. And we're just going to basically paint in a little bit of extra light just along this barrier in itself something like that and then we can again go in and add a bit more of the effect up the contrast and we can see what it would look like to add a little bit of clarity to it there but you know what a little bit a little bit works not as much something around there uh, I was about to press before and after of course it's not going to do anything um, 
yeah so I think that's I think that's starting to look a little bit better uh, in the hues I might drop that blue a little bit more into the cyan and I might even raise it in the luminance actually you know what it's not really doing anything where's our color coming from then we use this little dropper tool and then we can see exactly where that color is coming from okay so it's actually it's mostly the greens so that's interesting it means that we can push the green the hue of the greens right up taking it from being a green color into much more of a blue tone it's a really really good way of controlling exactly the tones that you want in an image if you've used um, you know, if the lighting was was weird in a certain scene and, and your colors are looking a little bit off, this is how you would correct individual colors without just changing your white balance, which obviously changes the colors in the whole of the image. Um, but it's a little bit too blue, so what I'm probably going to do is bring the saturation down and also bring the luminance down, which is again, deepen it down a little bit. Uh, flick that on and off. I think that's made uh, that's a nice little adjustment. Saturation. I want to bring up the orange and the yellows. Do I want to bring up the yellows? I do want to bring them up a little bit, but I'm going to bring the hue down, take them from being a, a yellowy, sickly green more into a vibrant yellowy orange, which is going to help it stand out a bit more against the blue. Not loads, subtle, but enough just to kind of make it pop. And I think that is probably about as much as I would want to do on this uh, this image. Um, on the actual one that I uh, I edited, as I said, I did a bit more work, uh, I did a lot more work in kind of blending in other waves, blah blah blah. Um, as I as I mentioned, that was very much Photoshop work, and Photoshop is great for editing uh, photos for well obvious reasons, but crucially you can build layers up and you can apply different effects and then pull back the opacity of that effect and layer things up in a way that you can't do um, in Lightroom. That's everything I'm going to do on this shot. I'm just going to check uh, in with the comments again. Uh, uh, terrible mess we've made, says Caitlin RC. Um, yeah, we have made a terrible mess. Uh, what a balance to keep that for nice and waves. Um, Viv Vivian says, anyone uh, anyone else thinking about how I need a clarity paintbrush for their lives? Just me? Okay, no, I'd, I'd love a, a clarity brush, um, which would be pretty good. Um, Uh, John Sharpen says, so much fun watching the process happen. Looks excellent. Thank you very much. And Beth Bloomer says, have to get an early night, but thanks for the lovely stream. Thoroughly enjoyable, and I learned a lot. Beth, thank you so much for joining. I will be doing more of these, so if you have enjoyed it, uh, and this is to everyone as well, please do subscribe to my channel. This is very much early days. Um, as I said, this is a celebration of hitting 2,000 subscribers, um, which I'm very, very excited about. I'd love to grow it even more. I'd love to get people involved. And I'd love to know what sort of um, things you'd like to see. If you are interested in photography, maybe there's certain techniques, certain styles of photo that you'd like to learn more about, do please head up in the comments, let me know. Um, and hopefully it's something that I could do more of in the future. Um, but so far, it is just honestly an absolute joy having people here. I didn't think there'd be anyone here. I thought it would be me and maybe the cat, but even he has left, so um, it would just be me. We're moving on to the castle. And I like this shot. I love this castle and it's been photographed to death and unsurprisingly so because you can take this shot from the big suspension bridge that hangs over the gorge so it's very easy to just get the, sh the castle like this in this amazing uh, sort of ridge surrounded by all these trees. It looks amazing. Um, first thing I'm going to do is to straighten it up because we can't do that with dice. Boom. There we go. Uh, and uh, Gentleman Drill says, nice, congrats on 2000, as does Shy Violet. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. Didn't think um, didn't think I would get uh, 2000 subscribers. So uh, yeah, really, really super pleased. Um, so let's begin. And on this one, we are going down with the highlights by 10 right the way to the bottom and that's not terrible because that as you can see has just really brought that sky under control when it was at zero some of this was quite washed out but we bring it down and suddenly we've got a lot more cloud detail there um so i actually probably would have done something very similar in my own edit maybe not all the way down maybe maybe halfway to, you know 50 or something just to take the edge off but no the dice is spoken and we're going all the way 
So, uh, shadows. We're going up by only 10. Okay, that's fine. Again, we would have wanted to bring up some shadow detail in these trees, so so far, not bad. The dice is learning. Or maybe it's luring us into a false sense of security. Which do we think? Should we trust the, d the dice? We're going this time down by 20 on the whites and uh, up by 70 on the blacks. Okay, now things are starting to get a little bit uh, a little bit hazy again. Alex uh, Samara says, dropping highlights in near zero is my jam. My skies are so often blown out. Uh, yeah, good. Yeah, drop them, drop them down, save them. Um, also, uh, good to use um, for anyone who um, uh, is interested in, in doing more is uh, the gradient filter. You can drag it down over your sky, looks like that, and then you can selectively bring down your exposure and ramp up your contrast and ramp up your clarity and uh, you know make it look super epic and menacing and that's what I'd like to do maybe after maybe after we've done um, the dice edit with this one I won't do my edit I'll do super menacing edit if if we want that uh, let me know if you want if you want a um, a menacing edit of this shot we'll see what we can do uh, where did we get up to? Oh, we're in texture, of course. So we're going uh, up by <laughs> up by ninety on the texture. Oh no! Um, yes, spooky edit says Rebecca M. Uh, and we're going up by seventy on the clarity. So again, we're going hyper crunchy with this shot then. So there we go. Yes to menacing. Yes, I'm getting yeses all round for um, uh, uh, for uh, doing a moody edit. Uh, and Alex Mara says, nice. I've only been using global adjustments on Lightroom for years without ever exploring those tools. Those tools, Alex and anyone else who uh, uses Lightroom, um, is the thing which I think will genuinely transform your editing more than anything else. When you be, when you can sort of apply certain uh, effects certain brightening or clarity or co uh, contrast and saturation adjustments to specific areas rather than just doing it to the whole image. Uh, you can get so much more control and that's how you can get really, really great looking effects. Uh, anyway, D Hayes. Down all the way. That's, um, that's not gone well. Uh, so let's quickly, I'm gonna ignore vibrance and saturation for now because I want to play with the hues a bit more in this one. Uh, Luke says, please duplicate the towers. So there are many of them towering up like Castlevania. Um, yeah, maybe we should maybe we should do that. That should be a good idea. Um, we're going in the highlights, lights, darks, in the tone curve, and we're going, uh, going up 70 on the highlights. Oh, we're just losing the castle now. Okay. Lights down 30. Shadow darks up by 60. This is more what I was afraid of, having a shot which is basically completely ruined. Shadows up 60. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, that hasn't, that hasn't gone super well. You know what, why don't we just get rid of that dehaze? For now, just bear with me. Maybe we'll come back to it, but we want to at least see the picture. And the dehaze is ruining everything for us. So instead, let's let's move on to the HSL. We're going to do hues. Um, I'm going to ignore red because I don't think there is any, and I'm going to ignore orange. So we'll start on yellow. Uh, Gentleman doing Anne Katie says it's gone very foggy, and uh, yes, so I've ignored it. I'm sorry. I hope you don't mind. I've overruled the dice, and I think it's not going to make the dice happy. I think I might end up suffering. For that decision later on. Uh, yellows, hue, we're going down by all the way. Um, just sort of shifted it a little bit. Uh, the greens, down by 70. Uh, aquas, up by all the way. 
blues are going down by 50. Overrule the dice, unheard of. Um, yes, um, I think uh, a real D and D fan would never, never dare to overrule the dice. But um, I've got photos to edit, you guys. Um, where did we get to? We've just done blues. Okay, <laughs> purples. We're going up by uh, six. Are there many purples in this scene? No, not really, and I bet there's not much um, magenta either. So it's basically an our hue, but let's go into the luminance as well and do the same thing. On our oranges, we're going up by 40. Uh, yellows, we're going down by 90. Um, greens, we're going down by 40. And aquas up all the way, and blues up sixty. So that's where we've got to, and it doesn't look great, does it? We've we've lifted too much shadows, and we've compressed the colours, and everything's um yeah a little bit a little bit weird in this one but you know a bit of fun let's see what the split toning does um no let's not see what the split toning does right yet let's jump ahead to our uh, primary channels and we're, we're going to take a look instead um at, uh, at what that does so we're going to start on the red hue and we're going down by 30. um i haven't really done loads Interesting. Saturation is going up by 90. That's done a little bit more. Uh, wait, green primary, the hue, down 50. Starting to get weird again, isn't it? And the saturation up 60. Lovely stuff. Yep. Starting to get very weird. Um, John Chapman says the colours aren't bad if the exposure wasn't crazy. Yeah, that's that's true. The exposure weren't weren't too bad. And actually, what what I did before is probably what I'm going to do when I do like a moodier edit for this um, in a moment. Uh, so I, you know, the dice weren't weren't too far wrong before. Uh, the blue hue is going down by ten. It's going all the way. Um, <laughs> that's now looking a little bit um a little bit instagram influencery in the very very uh the orange and teal look um which uh, you know if you did that and then whacked in a ton of contrast and clarity then there you go 100,000 instagram likes overnight um so let's not do that because um it's a bit cheap um Anyway, uh, blue saturation though is going down by 40. Yeah. I mean, it's got a look, hasn't it? It's definitely got a particular... It's got a particular look. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. It's, it's more those blues in the background that are spoiling it. So I wonder if we could pull those back in the HSL again. Maybe if we, in the saturation... Brought those blues down. Brought the aquas down. Oh, it's the aquas that were really, really blowing out there. So we maybe bring those blues back up a little bit. Maybe even uh, bring that back. I don't know why I'm editing this as though it's going to be a nice picture, but at least kind of want to show you how you could maybe try and rescue it back. Um, at that point, you know it. <laughs> It, it wouldn't be to my taste, but it's not a it's not a um it's not a it's not a terrible it's not a terrible look. It's got quite a nice uh colour palette um overall. Let's see what we could get with a split toning though. Uh the highlight hue is sorry, the highlight saturation is gonna go to seventy. And the hue is gonna go to ninety. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Um, 
and the shadows saturation is going to 40 and the hue is going to 77 something around there I feel a sneeze coming on but now I've said it it'll go <coughs> that's better um, I'd normally be able to edit out sneezes. Uh, it's the problem with doing a live stream, and I'm having to sort of consciously remind myself that this is uh, going out live rather than just recording, and then I can go in and cut out the rambling and the waffling and the sneezes and the burps. Um, uh, so, yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, um, I think the split toning ruined it. If we just turn that off, as I say, I don't, I don't hate uh, that. Um, as an image, and we need a lot of, lot of work still, but it's not altogether terrible. And actually, it's probably what I would do. Let's instead, instead of me starting from scratch on a moody edit, I'm going to try and take it from here, and we're going to do a little bit more. First of all, I'm going to just turn off uh, that tone curve because it wasn't doing anything for me. Um, we'll bring down the texture, bring down. Bring keep the clarity basically high, and bearing in mind this is not my edit. This is uh, trying to go moody and weird. That we're going to bring down highlights. We're going to keep down shadows. We're going to lift up a little bit, and then we're going to bring in our uh, our this. We're going to bring that exposure down, up the contrast, up the clarity, and a little bit up the dehaze, and really bring out that mood in those clouds to a huge degree. Suddenly we've gone from having uh, it's just an overcast day to the storm is really rolling in. Uh, batten down the hatches guys. Um, little tip uh, if you are using these tools um, is that you can see that it's affecting the spires of the castle itself. Lightroom has a great tool called the range mask and if you go luminance that basically means that you can tell uh, Lightroom that you only want that effect to apply to lighter or darker parts of your scene. In this case we don't want it to appear on the spires which are dark so if we click that select mask overlay, actually let's not do that, let's click show luminance mask. Um, we can then bring up the shadowy parts and you can see that's where it starts to disappear and if you look very closely as I am, with this face, that's how you inspect photos, uh, you can see that it's not, uh, it's not appearing on, uh, on the castle anymore, which is what we want. Uh, so there we go. Uh, that's, um, that's what I would want to do with that. I may even uh, bring in uh, a bit of darkening in these bottom corners, because I like that we brought in more detail around uh, uh, on the trees, but I still want it to have that uh, sort of vignette look where you know you're sort of looking into the image. So we're going to bring that in, bring in another one this side, draw the eye much more to the castle in the middle. And to help draw the eye to the castle in the middle, we're also going to add in a radial filter in the middle. We're going to increase the feather to make sure that it, it blends naturally with its background. And let's boost that exposure a little bit. Uh, highlights we can just bring down. The clarity we can boost a little bit more, even more clarity, that's right. Um, and maybe touch with the shadows, just a little bit, just to make that castle pop out even more. And you know, our before and after is quite dramatic. A lot of that color that, that we've got here has come from our calibration down here, putting that off. It's going a lot more back to normal. In fact, I actually quite like this because it's quite desaturated and but still with those more natural green tones. Um, I actually think that in itself has has quite a quite a nice look. I I quite like that um, because, as I say, you know the the, the, the greens are there. And we're not trying to fake an, an autumnal look. It's very much using the tones that were already in the picture, but just playing with them a little bit. So kind of grounded in realism but giving it that slight fantasy uh, tweak but this has really amped up that um, extra look so maybe we could um, play a bit more with the saturation of our blue primary in fact if we just pull that out all together um, it just helps soften those tones 
Um, our green primary, oh yeah, that's where a lot of that nice oranginess was uh, was happening. So that's interesting. And our reds as well. Um, you know, our reds we could even push. That's going quite a lot that way. Yeah, okay. So if I was going for a, if I wanted to go super moody, I'd probably be looking at something like this. And in fact, maybe if I upped those whites and then dropped our exposure a little bit more, maybe go back into this filter, brighten it up. Then again, we've got a darker moody scene and the castle is standing out even more. Before, it looks like this. After, it looks like this. Suddenly, it's surreal. It's very fantasy. Um, not my sort of thing, because I would consider this a little bit too faked um, in terms of kind of what I've done, the look that I have tried to get. I've, I've changed a, what was a nice summer's greeny day into, into, into this. But, I mean, I don't know what my argument in its favor is you know some people like it uh, and you know those sorts of things do well on Instagram you know if you imagine that popping up in your feed in a in a one-to-one -one crop uh, like that in suggested that would end up getting probably a lot of uh, likes and follows um, particularly if you're one of those accounts where every single image in the whole feed had those color tones we don't want that um, so anyway let's move on in fact what time are we on half past 10 so I've been going for about an hour hour and a half how is everyone finding the stream we've still got lots of people in which is really really great thank you so much everyone um, but I, I basically I threw in more pictures than I thought I would need um, so I'm kind of wondering at what point I should wrap up I think I'm gonna keep going uh, I might go until 11 and we'll just make it a two-hour stream uh, Luke says, screenshot stream to post to Instagram. Um, yeah, by all means. No, no, don't do that. It's mine. Uh, it's excellent, Andy. Tons of fun, says John Sharplin. MXT says, really enjoying it so far. Thank you very much. Uh, in which case, I'm going to keep going for um, uh, for a little bit more. Um, uh, so let's. Let's do this one. Let's let's do let's do this. This is a long exposure one of thirty seconds that I took um, in the Peak District at Bamford Edge, and I used a long exposure because I wanted to try and get um, uh, some of the cloud moving over the top of these rocks. Now, I really like the look of having the long exposure clouds where it streaks across the sky when you are pairing it with something like these rocks, which is they're so static and solid and ancient and unmoving and you get that amazing juxtaposition of of those two elements uh, together, which I think works really, really well. Um, same reason why I think it, it works well with uh, with waterfalls, with slow shutty, because you get that motion blur of the water, but obviously the rocks around it and everything else is completely static, so it looks really cool. Obviously, in this shot, we have then got some motion from the uh, uh, from the the plants uh, around the rocks themselves, uh, but I think that kind of adds. Um, uh, a little bit of extra something uh, to this shot. It's not one of my favorites. It wouldn't be in my portfolio. Um, I don't even think I put it on uh, on Instagram. But uh, oh, if you are on Instagram, I'm at Battery HQ. You can follow me. Um, uh, follow me on Instagram uh, and Twitter is exactly the same. Battery HQ. Um, but anyway, we're going to kick off. We're going to get through this one pretty quickly. Uh, so we'll start with the highlights again, and we're going to start with uh, going up by 60 on the highlights. Uh, so already brightening it up quite a lot. We're then going to go down by 90 on the shadows. Uh, we're then going to go down 50 on the whites, and then down 40 on our black levels. So it's gone it's gone a bit crunchy. But it's not outright destroyed yet. There's a before, there's our after. There's some scope to um, do a little bit more with this. I can't help but notice in the corner of my eye on uh, I've got my iPad up to see the stream, make sure everything's going okay. 
how emo my hair has gone at the moment because I haven't had it cut since January. Um, uh, a very good friend of mine uh, called uh, called Charlie, who um, uh, normally does my hair. He's an extremely good stylist, and he also has a uh, YouTube channel called uh, Charles Salisbury Hair, I believe, where he talks all about hair care at home, which is very important right now when you can't go to the salon. So uh, do hunt that out. But how's it looking? It's looking terrible. And also there's a delay between me doing it here and seeing it here. So we're just going to have to trust. Anyway, where were we? Enough about my stupid hair. Uh, texture Clarity D Haze. We're going up 10 on texture. Not too bad. That's probably too subtle. That's basically just sharpened it slightly. Then we're going up 50 on Clarity. Again, not too bad. And actually on the texture of the rocks, this kind of works. Uh, oh, Charles in the comments, he says, Thanks, man. You're welcome, Charles Salisbury Hair. Uh, he has got very long, lovely hair, and I have just got overgrown, crappy hair. Um, my hair goal, and beard goal, and indeed face and body goal, is uh, Mutt from Schitt's Creek, uh, if you watch that show. Um, nothing about his character or the choices he makes, but man, that hair. How do I how do I get that hair? That's what I that's what I need. Also, his cheekbones and everything else that makes him uh, a very very good looking dude. D Hayes, we're going up eighty on the D Hayes. That is a lot of D Hayes. We have ruined this image already. Uh, okay, vibrance. We are going up. 10. It's just the first one when we've upped the vibrance rather than bringing it down. Um, uh, and then saturation, we are also going up 60. Yes, 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 yes. It's ruined. Um, so let's, let's see what our tone curve then is going to do. And we're going to go uh, up 10 on our highlights we're going down 80 on our lights and we are going uh, it's a three down three is down I remember now how numbers work uh, three uh, down 50 on our darks Oh, which is going to make it very dark. Okay. So why don't we... Oh, no. Let's just... All right. 50 it is. Fine. Dice. And then up 20 on our shadows. So, yeah, our picture's gone dark and we're sort of ruined. Maybe let's balance it out for the sake of argument with a little boost in the exposure just so we can see what's going on at least. Uh, and then let's dive into our hues. And we're going to change our hue around. Um, okay, uh, reds, we don't really have anything in the red, so let's just start straight away with orange, and we're going to go uh, down 10 with our orange, about there, we're going up 70 with our yellows, really taking them into a, into a vibrant green place, down all the way with our greens, things going odd again, up 20 with our aquas, down 80 with our blues, <laughs> yeah now things are going weird, here's where we go, someone's saying it's a bit Skyrim now, uh, it's not anymore, now it's just terrible, down uh, 10 with our purples, is there really any purple, oh, there's a little bit in this sky, okay down 10. But I don't think there's any magenta to speak of. So we can leave that there. That's weird. Yeah, that this is uh this has done weird things with our sky. But it was weird before. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh let's go down then to our calibration and we're gonna play around with our primaries again. So start with red and we're gonna go up 20 on the hue. We're gonna then do down 
90 on the saturation. Interesting. Gin time. That's the other problem, excuse me, with <laughs> with having grown a, a beard over quarantine is that I'm not used to how you eat and drink with a, a beard and a moustache. And so every time I take a drink, the moustache wants to play too, and um, I don't know how to stop it. Okay. Uh, Annika Brock says the sky looks fake. <laughs> Yes, yes, it does look fake. That is uh, that is absolutely accurate. Uh, green primary, here we go. We're going up, and we're going up all the way. Um, and in saturation, we're going also up, and we're going up 30. And then the blue primary, hue is going down by 3. Or 30. And the saturation is going also down by 40. So there's our image. Um, I'm not really going to do uh, anything else because time's ticking on a little bit. Um, uh, or maybe we should... Yeah, actually, let's finish off with our HSL. Let's go into the saturation. Let's just see kind of what that does. Uh, oh, John Chapman says, we need an answer on the type of gin you've got going on currently. Um, the gin first time was Forest Gin, which is a really, really nice gin made in um, uh, uh, near Macclesfield and Peak District. Uh, absolutely beautiful gin. Um, I've got a bit of a range of gins going on at the moment. Um, I think this one might be an Orkney gin, um, but I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it's lovely, is all I know, except... I've just got a lemon pip in my mouth. But that's just one of the risks you take with a gin and tonic, you guys. You might get pips. Saturation. Uh, again, we'll start with the oranges. We're going up by 40. Uh, yellows. We're going up by 100. All the way up with that. Um, two up by uh, 10. Uh, Vivian says there's three different gins on your Instagram. You know, you're right, Vivian. There are three different gins, and which reminds me, it is uh, it is the Ealing gin, which is one of the ones I photographed because it, it's uh, it's not the pink one because the pink one has a lovely strawberry flavour, which um, this doesn't have, um, and it's not the uh, Aquavit because that's Aquavit, not gin. So it is Ealing gin. Uh, that's how I know from Ealing. Uh, which is uh, where I used to live. It's lovely. Um, right. Uh, aquas. We're going down by 70. And blues. We're going down by 40. Okay. Uh, we'll ignore uh, purple and magenta. We're going to luminance very quickly. Oranges up by 70. Yellows down. Ten. This is like the weirdest bingo calling. Or um, one of those automated services when you dial and you try and book train tickets. Your train is delayed. Four. Ever. Uh, down by 90 was greens then. Aquas. Down. 70 and blues down 20 so it's not great is it it's really not great um yeah uh <laughs> i don't know what i was expecting every at, at the um, end of uh, each one um i've said oh yeah that's not good. As though I was expecting different results from a dice, um, from entirely uh, the luck of the numbers that came up. I, I don't know. I don't know why I'm blaming the poor results on the dice. Um, I feel like I, I'm bad. I mean, I don't like it. Let me know. Uh, let me know in the comments if uh, if that to you is a is a picture that you would happily have printed out and put on your wall. Um, 
Vivian says, okay, compared to all the other dice filtered shots, I like this one the most so far. Yeah, good. Um, I mean, if you would like a print, you can have the file. Uh, Shy Violet, however, says the castle is my favorite. Yeah, I think the castle uh, is the one. I, I think the castle worked the best, and certainly when we took it out a little bit further into our, our into our moody edit, um, I think that looked uh, a little bit better. Um, time is ticking on there, uh, so I think we should move on to our last image. I'm going to skip the other other ones. It was going to be. This shot of Croatia in Revenge, which is nice, and uh, some normal edits. Why am I doing this? Don't know. Uh, and also this one uh, of Dean Village in the heart of Edinburgh, which is a very, very beautiful place you should go. Instead, we're going to go on to this one of Luke, because I know that everyone who's here, or a lot of people who are here, are here uh, thanks to Luke, and I think Luke probably still is in the comments, and he... I'm sure will want to know how the dice uh, is going to butcher him because he's never used these dice. So, you know, they don't have the connection that he does with his own D&D &D dice. You know, they've got an understanding, Luke and his dice. Not these ones, though. So, the first thing I'm going to do with this, though, is I'm just going to change the crop because we're not cropping via dice. And we don't want this in the top and we don't want all this empty space in the bottom. So we're just going to bring it down one to one crop, straighten it up a little bit, hit enter. You know what? Let's do that again. Move it up a little bit more. That, that. Uh, so there we go. That then is the picture that we are going to be working with. It is Luke as Dob. He is absolutely rocking out with his horn and also that drinking vessel he's got. Um, so let's begin straight away with our highlights and we're going to go down by 20. Starting easily guys. We're starting safe. This image is dark, so at some point maybe I'm going to have to lighten this up a little bit because uh, we're going shadows are going down by ninety. Dear me, okay. So this is why I didn't do the exposure because again, we don't want to kind of ruin the shot to the point where you can't see it, and I can then use exposure to maybe rescue it back a little bit. Uh, okay, whites we're going down by thirty. And the blacks were going down by 10. So everything has been brought down so far. So yes, I'm going to take the uh, make the decision in upping our exposure just, just to play the game so that we can at least see the shot. Um, otherwise, you're watching me edit a black square. So um, there's no point in that really. There's our before, there's our after. So really what those edits have done is just drop those shadows and uh, added a bit of contrast really so uh, let's see what the texture cloud and dehaze is going to do so texture we're going up by 90 here we go this is when we're going to get into the good stuff and the um hang on what was i on clarity we're going up and we're going up by 10. really just just 10 clarity okay if you insist um D Hayes up 30. Okay, now we're getting a little bit uh, a little bit more punchy, a little bit more dramatic. Um I actually did quite a bit on um with this uh with uh, texture and clarity in the edit because if you notice, if we just have a look in on the on Luke's uh, furry rough, the before and after it really brings out those details, adding in that um uh, adding in that texture and, and clarity, so that's pretty good. Uh, vibrance, we are going up by 90. And suddenly Luke has gone orange. Uh, saturation, we're going up 20. Yep, very orange. Good looking Luke. Uh, so let's go straight into our hues then, um, in that case, so we can play around with those colors. Um, and I also lean over and unsettly move my phone around um, just so I can figure out what on earth is going on. Uh, okay, hue. 
we're going down on the reds by 50 and on the oranges we are going up 40 <laughs> it's going very up. it looks like he's got very very lurid lipstick on now um not a not a bad look not a bad look for luke up 40 in the yellows greens we are going down by 30 uh aquas you know what are, is there any aqua in this or oh, blue or purple i think we've pretty much t used all of the colors in that palette so that's uh, that's about it so let's let's do let's do the same but with saturation um only in the first few because that's where the colors actually are down 80 in the reds oh the lipstick's gone that's a shame luke up 40 in the orange up 90 in the yellows <laughs> Um, up 40 in the greens just in case you wanted those off and on yeah it's done weird things to Luke's face and body uh, so let's go down to let's go down to the calibration and I'll make this uh, probably the last thing um, uh, last thing we do um, Emily Price asks is Luke Wis is Luke witnessing this uh, I don't know uh, he Luke was in Luke was in the chat earlier it is getting it is getting pretty late so I'm not sure if he's there uh, if he's still in but um, uh, I will send him this picture uh, if not just so we can um, we can have a good laugh and maybe uh, uh, oh he is <laughs> he is in the chat he's made sad face um, red primary hue is going down by 90 oh dear okay so we've gone into um he's, he's turned purple he's gone a little um i want to say violet beauregard was that her name in um charlie and the chocolate factory she eats the blueberries and turns blue and swells up uh saturation wise we are going uh up 20. this is looking superb you guys green which is my best success yet the dice was absolutely spot on <laughs> luke says it's okay andy you don't need to send it to me seeing it here is enough is it though we shall have to see uh up by 90 on the green um on the green channel and then up by a hundred on the saturation it's gone very pink now. Uh, down 30 in the blue. And down 80 in the blue saturation. So there we go. That's what we've managed to do to poor old Luke. If we just if we flick that off, I oh know it's still very yellow, isn't it? Yeah. I, I was thinking all of the damage has been done by this last tool but no it, it it hasn't i mean you know what it's a look he, he looks a little bit overworked um a little bit um no that that's that's too pink i was trying to think if he's been working out a little bit too much but i think if you turn that color after a workout over your whole body it's probably a um a medical condition that you you might want to look at um, but then I'm no doctor. But nor is Luke. So I think we're probably safe here. Um, that, I think that's everything I'm going to do. I think we've, we've, we've done enough damage to, uh, certainly to my photos and, and to poor old Luke and, and the other guys um, as well. So but let's have a look. look that's the, that's the straight, out, straight out of camera raw. This is what we've done to it. It's, um, it's not looking good. It's really not looking good. Um, this one, yeah, again, very, very odd tones. And our castle, of course, our um, <laughs> our Instagram edit uh, ended up coming out okay. Um, uh, and the others, uh, yeah. Uh, that one, weird, uh, weird sort of duotone um, filter effect. Uh, I didn't save that one. Oh, and I didn't, oh, we did save this one too. So, yeah. Um, 
I don't think I can really call the, the dice edit a massive success in that I don't think I have massively uh, learnt new techniques from the dice. Maybe I was hoping to come away with some ideas on how to enhance my own editing for the future, maybe some techniques that I'll put into future tutorials, future videos, anything like that. Um, I think that would be a stretch if I were to tell you that, and I don't think I'd be entirely truthful. Um, what I have learned is that um, you can take a really, really daft idea and try and stretch it out to two hours on a YouTube live stream. Um, whether that's been a good thing or not really isn't for me to say. Um, I don't think it's something I'm going to be doing for a while, at very least. It may be something I do for uh, for fun later on. Um, but it has been it has been a lot of fun, and I just thought it'd be it'd be just a bit of a laugh, something with a little bit different to do as a bit of a milestone for for hitting two thousand uh, subscribers, which. Um, as I say, I'm really, really pleased with. I'm really taken aback by the by the support and the um, encouragement I've had from people so far. Um, so yeah, really, really, really chuffed. Um, and I thought this was yeah a good way of, a good way of marking that. Um, but I think from 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 here on out, I might be might be back to business. So if you haven't seen my channel before, um, it is all about photography. It's not normally involving dice. It's normally about going out onto location, either trying to get uh, lovely landscapes in, in beautiful parts of, uh, of the world, uh, or maybe it's um, uh, maybe it's shooting cars or uh, products um, uh, or macro, getting really up close on insects. Um, uh, yeah, and because I, I really love photography and I really love um, uh, really love doing that, so um, that's normally what I would do. So if you are at all interested in photography or you like seeing me rambling at a camera for far far too long, please do subscribe, follow along, tell a few friends. This is a tiny little channel. Um, I really want to kind of grow it um, and and see see where it goes. So uh, you know, if you have anyone in your life that you think would like to um, see some uh, photography videos, then um, yeah, send them along a link and, and get them involved. Um, oh, John John Sharplin has has commented with a with a very generous donation and says that was a blast, Andy. Have a donation and a new subscriber. I will definitely be back when you do another stream. Well, thank you so much, John. That is incredibly incredibly generous of you. Um, I really do hope I, I'm going to do more streams. My videos come out uh, you usually every Sunday um, that's uh, yeah for the most part that's that's when I do it um, but I am hoping to uh, also do a uh, midweek live stream normally it will be much more of an actual uh, detailed edit um, of an image rather than something like this actually showing some of the uh, the skills that I use uh, professionally in in my actual professional photography uh, so yeah do do please hang around um, see those but I think I'm probably going to wrap the stream up uh, at this point. Um, so again, I really want to say huge thank you to everyone who has been on there. We've still got over 70 people um, watching, which uh, is so much more than I thought. And it's been absolutely great having everyone here. Like I'm really overwhelmed by all these people who have been uh, who have been taking part. Uh, so thanks so much. I uh, really cannot wait uh, for more of you um, uh, to come back, and which only leaves me to see whether or not pressing this button does in fact end my stream the way I intend it to.